In this video, we're gonna be talking about top five questions I usually get about cat diesel engines. Now I've gotten thousands of questions over the years. These are the most common ones I get. So hopefully you enjoy the topic. Hey guys, this is Joshua with Depth Channel, and in this video we're going to be discussing the top five questions that I've gotten over the years through my comments section and all my emails about cat diesel engines. Now I've done specific videos on most of these we're going to be discussing, and I'll put links to them while we're discussing them, but since I get so many of the same questions all the time, I wanted to just do a quick highlight of each topic and then discuss it. If you want, you can go watch the longer videos. So let's get into the questions. So the first one is low power or my truck has low power. My engine seems to be making low power. And usually what I'll ask is, what's your boost numbers? And that doesn't mean boost equals low power, but boost is a very good indication that if your engine does or does not have low power. If your engine's not building the boost that it used to, or maybe you just acquired the engine and it doesn't have what you think is the correct amount of boost, that's a good indication that, that yes, it could be low on power. So one of the biggest things is you wanna see if you have a check engine light before you start diving into the engine itself. A check engine light can give you hints or be the direct cause of a low power condition through D-rate or let's say a boost pressure sensor isn't reading or atmospheric pressure sensor, coolant temperature, all these contribute or can contribute to low power. Now, of course, you can dyno a truck engine. It's very expensive and it might be hard to find one around you that'll dyno a cat engine. But generally what I recommend is monitor your boost numbers to begin with if you think your truck has low power. Best way to do that is with a boost gauge. Now, if you don't have a boost gauge, you need to get a boost pressure, well, basically just a gauge that will read PSI, generally up to 50 or 100 PSI. And then you're gonna put it in your intake manifold and monitor how much boost it's building. If you don't know what it's supposed to be building, you can email me or ask a cat dealer employee to find out in TMI with your engine serial number to see what the boost should be. Once you know if your boost is too high or too low or perfect, that can kind of indicate what's going on. Generally, if it is low on power, the boost is gonna be low. Now boost is an indication, not generally or not always, I should say, the cause of low power. So if it does have low boost, I usually start by checking your intake and exhaust system. Things like CAC leaks, plugged air filters, bad waste gates. So once you've checked your boost system to see, okay, I don't have any leaks in the system, turbocharger seems to be fine, I don't have any exhaust restrictions, no check engine lights. Next thing is going to be your fuel system. Always measure your fuel pressure. If fuel pressure is low, you're gonna have low power. It can also cause other symptoms, but it's a good idea to check it. If your fuel pressure is okay, if your boost pressure is still low though, but the CAC and everything seems to be okay, no check engine light, well, it starts to get a little more complicated at that point. At that point, you might wanna talk about possibly taking it to a dealer or you wanna get some sort of software and start looking for more complicated problems with the system. That particularly is true with Huey engines, which are oil-driven injectors hydraulic electronic unit injectors like C7s and C9s, those systems have an additional system that can be causing low power by having problems with the Huey system itself. But we're not gonna get really deep in the woods on the Huey system. We're gonna get to the next question, which is, my cat engine won't start. Now I get a lot of these when generally RVs or trucks that sit for a long time, it seems like, and then when they go to restart them, they just won't start, they'll just crank and crank and crank. Both topics or both questions we've already discussed, both low power and won't start, I really like troubleshooting. It can be very frustrating for an owner operator. So what you wanna do with a no start, it's generally one of two things for most engines or one of three things for Huey engines. The first main thing for why your cat engine's not starting is an electrical problem. Now by an electrical problem, I mean the ECM is either not powering because it's not getting a good ground good power or a good switched power source or the ECM is bad itself. And a lot of times a crank no start is gonna be the ECM itself. Unfortunately, the CAT ECMs, of course, CAT engines are getting older. The ECM is a computer, a 20 year old computer, sometimes not quite reliable. That is the number one cause of crank no starts in CATs. Now, if it's trying to start, that cannot generally be an electrical problem. Usually that is a fuel problem, which is the second highest reason for crank no starts and cat engines in my experience. So of course, that would be low fuel pressure. So you're gonna to wanna to get your fuel pressure gauge again. I'm gonna say that a lot, measure fuel pressure. If it's low, 
Change your fuel filters first, unless you've changed them recently, but fuel filters are a good place to start. If it's not that, then you wanna go through your fuel system troubleshooting, like the pressure regulator, the transfer pump, things like that. Now I did mention if you have a Huey engine, which would be a C7, 3126, C9, those can be crank no start, but the Huey system itself a lot of times can be the problem. And that, hard to troubleshoot without CAD ET, which is a software program we communicate with the ECM, but that can be a very likely reason why it's not starting. Before we get into the next topic, how about we do a little destruction of the week? Since we just talked about Huey engines not starting, we have a very timely video that actually got this week, which ties into that subject. And this came from Alex, and thank you for sending the video. Here we go. Go ahead. So that was Huey oil squirting out there. That is why his engine's not starting. Now, this next video was sent to me as a news thing. It pretty much speaks for itself, but it's hilarious. If you want to find this, just type in Florida truck driver in YouTube. There's also a bunch of news stories on it. There you go. Yeah, wh why get out and check your truck? It's unbelievable. Well, let's get back to work here. Now the next one can get really complicated and that is your engine smokes. And generally this can be at startup or just going down the road, but it seems like engines generally smoke a lot more when they're cold. The reasons why an engine can smoke can be myriad. There are a ton of reasons why they could be smoking. Of course, the color of the smoke the scent of it can determine what it is. You can have white smoke, black smoke, bluish smoke, and white's probably the most common, and it's the hardest to diagnose because unburned fuel, oil, coolant, they can all cause white smoke. Black smoke is generally unburned carbonized fuel, so fuel getting in the cylinder, but not all of it is burning, and bluish smoke is generally oil. Now, white smoke is difficult to troubleshoot, like I said, because it can have so many causes. You could have oil, for instance, blowing past the turbo seals. You could have excess fuel getting into the cylinders at the wrong time. You could have coolant getting into the cylinders. There's a lot of causes of that. And best thing you can do is if you have a miss and it's smoking, or if you can, do cylinder cutout test to determine if you can reduce the amount of smoke. That will tell you which cylinder is leading to the cause, and then you can diagnose that cylinder itself. None of the cylinders seem to be doing it in particular. You probably have a systemic problem like the turbocharger or a cracked cylinder head, blown head gas, or something like that. So it can be tricky to troubleshoot, but that is a very common question I get on cat diesel engines. All right, so the next one is very complicated, and I do have a specific video on this, but when should I rebuild my engine, or should I rebuild my engine? I get a lot of these when people own a truck, and they're like, hey, the mechanic says it's needed to rebuild because it won't start, or it's got low oil pressure. There's not always a specific time to rebuild an engine. Obviously, if you have a bearing failure or a piston's disintegrated, broken ring, something like that, crack cylinder head and you have the head off, there's good times to do them. But if the engine's running pretty good, but maybe it's getting worn, it's got some oil leaks at the head gasket, it's got higher than normal blow by, it's eating a little more than a gallon every 10,000 miles of service, it can start to be worn. But does that necessarily mean it needs a rebuild? No, that's there's some subjectivity there. If your oil pressure is still within specifications, it's not eating excessive amounts of oil in your opinion, it's not leaking oil all over the ground, you don't have to rebuild it. I have talked people probably out of rebuilds more than I have for rebuilds because I don't wanna see them waste their money. Let the engine make you as much money as it can or get as many miles out of it as you can, then rebuild it when it really needs it. Now that's not to say let it go until the thing's completely covered in oil and you're putting a gallon of oil in every fuel fill up, but there is some subjectivity in when an engine necessarily needs to be rebuilt. And that is a lot of it up to your discretion. Now, like I said, if you have a mechanical failure, like it drops a valve or something, that is out of your decision making at that time because it has to be rebuilt at that time. But a lot of times rebuilds are a, this engine's getting worn situation. Let's get to the last question, which is a very interesting topic. And that is, 
emissions deletion. Now the CAT engines, most of them are pre-emissions or low emissions engines, except for the 07 to 2010 product the CAT made. But the 04 to 07 also had some emissions controls on the heavy duty engines. And I get questions a lot of time on, hey, should I take out my twin turbos, although they're actually compound turbos, should I take off my intake valve actuators? If you have a regen engine like an 07 CAT, hey, can I delete the DPF? Can I remove the ARD head? Now I'm a CAT dealer employee, and generally my recommendation is no, don't do that. It's your truck, I'm not saying I'm not telling you what to do with your truck, but if you're watching this video, you probably wanna know my advice. If you delete the emissions, and I've seen this several times, when you go to sell the truck, or let's say you're having a problem with the truck and you wanna take it to a dealer, a lot of times a dealer won't work on it if it's been deleted until you bring it back up to specification. Or if someone is gonna buy it, they might not be interested as much in buying it if it's been deleted. Also, if you do get work at a dealership done and it's emissions deleted, Basically, there's no warranty on the parts at that point, even if they say, let's do a water pump or a set of injectors, something not necessarily tied to the emission system. CAT in general and the dealerships aren't gonna touch an engine that's been emissions deleted. Now, like I said, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you what I've seen in the past. And the emission systems do tie into the other systems of the engine, like the ARD system ties into the fuel system. So. Once you start messing with that, you start messing with basically the fuel system on the engine. So it can get complicated. That's why I, generally I recommend keep it stock, keep the emissions on there. I know they're expensive. I know they're hard to troubleshoot. That is what they are. If you are concerned with emissions, I'd say generally stay away from, I, would, I can't even say newer engines anymore because the emissions have been on there for so long now, about 15 years, but the pre-04 or even the 07, pre-07 products, basically gonna have almost no emissions controls on them. And if that's your primary concern, buy an older truck and then you don't have to worry about it. Well, that's my list. Hope you guys found it interesting. Thanks for watching. What do you think of that mustache? Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go.